Naughty, naughty. <laughs> So, um, the FreeBSD project is a community-driven project. Um, the active developers do elect uh, every two years a new core team of nine people responsible for deciding the project of our goals and directions, as well as validating new committee's proposals and um, work on the project overall by bylaws. The FreeBSD uh, Foundation is a 501 US-based nonprofit organization dedicated to supporting and promoting in the FreeBSD project and community worldwide. Uh, funding comes from individual and corporate donation and is used to fund and manage a project, uh, fund conferences, uh, developer summits, provide travel grants for developers, that's how a bunch of people are heading here. Um, the foundation purchases the hardware to improve and maintain the FreeBSD infrastructure and publishes a FreeBSD white paper and marketing material to promote, educate, advocate for the FreeBSD project. Uh, the foundation also represents the project uh, in executing contracts, license agreements, and other legal arrangements that uh, require a recognized legal entity. Very serious. Yeah. Um, to quote its uh, website, the uh, OpenBSD Foundation is a Canadian not for profit corporation which exists to support OpenBSD and their related projects such as uh, OpenSSH, uh, OpenBGBD, MTPD, etc. Uh, it is a fundraising entity only. Uh, it does not own any copyright over the code, even for uh, sponsored work. Uh, it's responsible uh, also for uh, founding the day to day needs of the project, the hackathon, uh, etc., and works solely through donations uh, from users and companies. Uh, it has no influence whatsoever on the project itself. Um, also, the country of origin is kind of important. Uh, while it may not seem like it uh, at first, um, it actually is when it concerns the operating system. Uh, OpenBSD being based in Canada means that we are not subject to the uh, US crypto export regulation at all. Uh, of course, the consequence was illegal to re export OpenBSD uh, from the USA early on, and no US citizens uh, were allowed to work uh, on crypto of the project. So remember, people, it is very important to donate to both foundations. Yes. So now let's just uh, jump straight into a very controversial subject. Artist. Yeah. What's the deal about that lib exo thing? Um. <laughs> have you tried to parse the net stat output uh, with scripting languages? Well, having a programmatically uh, parsable output is very handy to write uh, software on top of FreeBSD uh, quite quickly, and Libixo is very useful for that. Uh, it provides the ability for the program to output some JSON or um, XML output. Well, I think I agree with you. Uh, does tools like LS really need to have LibXO output? I mean, it looks like uh, over engineering, I speak. All scripting languages provide an API to be able uh, to deal with file systems, so I don't see the relevance here. Well, to be honest on that one, I had to search hard to find a usefulness, but I found one. So, um, how do you um, how do you with a scripting language deal with some BXD extensions like uh, CH flags? Uh, all the languages uh, are not aware of this, so you can have it through the in the big so. Yeah, I'm kind of torn about this. Um, it's not because one can implement something and one should. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Honestly, I have no argument about that one. <laughs> So the funny story behind this one is uh, we discovered it at EuroBSDCon last year on someone else's uh, talk, and everyone in the audience thought it was a typo on the on the uh, the slides. Wow. But it, it is actually a thing, and I have no argument for this one. Well, see, from my perspective, Oops. this all looks very over-engineered. <laughs> so I mean, even just for uh, the, the GL management. GL administration, for example, you almost have like 10 plus third party tools uh, uh, to handle them. Why? I mean, why don't you have one good tool instead of 10 written by different people and from different quality? There is a similarly huge list of, of tools for controlling different aspects of uh, ZFS and all. Some in base, some not. Um, oh, 
sorry for mentioning this, but three firewalls I mean, can be very confusing yeah. to know which one to use and whether you can mix them or not. Or, I mean, when, when you're new to FreeBSD, this is all very confusing. So from an outsider, I would say that IPFW should be the native firewall. I mean, it was written by FreeBSD for FreeBSD. So why keep IP filter and PF, which as far as I know has not even been synced uh, with upstream for you? So, uh, I have multiple things to say there. Uh, so for jail, uh, the provided default tools uh, in base system are, in my opinion, good enough to manage them. Uh, they are flexible, they are nice, they are simple to use, and all external tools are mostly to provide some extra features like uh, automated provisioning, uh, which I don't think belong to base, uh, because uh, they can evolve faster, and if they are available in the post three, uh, it's way easier to have updated version and um, remember that a branch will live for something like five years. So considering uh, ZFS, the only one I have in mind is BE at ADM, what is, which could be missing in the base system, which would allow to have multiple uh, boot environments. Um, this one will, yes, end up in the base system one day, if not yet. I haven't checked for a while what happened recently in that, uh, because it's useful, but it's planned to. Uh, considering the firewalls, yeah, true. Uh, IPFW has been developed by and for FreeBSD, but as long as as we have people that are willing to actively maintaining older firewalls, yeah, there is no issue with that. <laughs> 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 so regarding PF, exactly. So regarding PF, uh, it's true it hasn't been synced for a couple of years, but it's still actively maintained, beside what you're saying. Uh, and it has features that are not yet available on OpenBSD, uh, which makes syncing uh, difficult, like we have SMP support, uh, VNet is another example. So remember, it's all in our case about flexibility, and yes, sometimes flexibility has a price. We can have a multiple version for some Thing, but it's for users. Well, in OpenBSD, we like simplicity. Um, I agree that we may need a few features here and there sometimes, uh, but ready to uh, accept it if it keeps us sorry, clean, simple, and self contained. Uh, it is simply unsustainable to keep accommodating choices all the time. And in general, complexity is the worst enemy of security, which is one of our primary goals. Well, flexibility does not mean complexity. We also like simplicity in our case. <laughs> bye bye. Let's not talk about that. No one's interested anyway, so. Baptiste, <laughs> come on. So, um. Good. Okay, I guess we can say a few words about the file system, but you go first. Okay, so. FreeBSD, in FreeBSD, we support multiple file systems. So uh, the native one being the original UFS that had evolved in the time. So it's now support modern features like journaling, soft updates, trim, etc. Uh, we also, of course, support very modern file systems such as uh, ZFS as a first class citizen. Um, our file system support uh, is extended to some uh, random other file system like MS DOS file system X2, 3, and 4 without journaling, NANDFS, and more. What about you? Well, um, on OpenBSD, we're still stuck with the traditional BSD file system, uh, UFS. Uh, that said, uh, it has been extremely stable for us. Uh, at least for me, uh, running OpenBSD in production since 15 plus years, I've never lost a file. Uh, we obviously also support that like, regular stuff like NFS, only version 2 and 3, because version 4 is very right, and uh, we needed we, we need some stuff that we don't want in base, like GSS API. Uh, our auto mounter is still AMD from 4 and 4 ASD. Um, well, it's not very efficient, but it gets the job done. Uh, I, for one, would uh, welcome a more modern implementation. Uh, regarding internet SCSI, uh, we have a native iSCSI initiator implementation. Uh, it's called iSCSI D. Uh, I would not argue that file system is not really where we shine. Uh, we have no journal. Uh, we do have soft updates, but we still have some bugs in that code path. Uh, like uh, the system could panic if there is a vulnerable <laughs> IO failure. So that's why standard OpenBSD installation does not come uh, with a soft update uh, on any ISCSI. You really still have bugs in soft update nowadays? 
Yeah, but you guys have to correct, it's just too easy, it's hard to compete. Uh, so on FreeBSD, under the hood, we have the Geom layer, which is a powerful uh, layer that provides us support for multipass through G multipass, uh, encryption, GLE, GBDE, mirroring, G mirror, uh, network transport with GGate. Uh, also, it allows to fake hardware errors and things like that with GNOP. Very useful to test. Uh, we have a wonderful support for iSCSI targets with the CTLD, um, with the cam control layer. Um, it also includes a, a high availability support, which is very nice. We have uh, iSCSID and initiator for iSCSIs. On network file system, we have very good support for NFS, all version, server and client. Uh, even PNFS support is coming very soon. Uh, we provide NATI tool to deal with most of the storage devices. Uh, it includes uh, SES devices with SES util. Uh, also, we can talk natively to SAS cards uh, using uh, native tools, not having to use uh, blobs from uh, LSI and other um, providers. As a client of storage, uh, we also use the traditional AMD if we need to, but recently we have a new shiny auto FS that happened. Um, and uh, that's only speaking about the user facing uh, utilities. But in general, I, I do agree that uh, your GM and stuff is uh, generally a better solution, uh, mainly except with regard to uh, multipath, with, uh, which we do at the SCSI layer uh, with MPATH. So that doesn't require any manual configuration. You just plug in capable hardware and uh, it figures it out. Um, regarding ZFS, which you mentioned, um, it's with your kitchen sink. So, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Uh, honestly, I don't have a strong opinion on the matter. Um, so, I don't know. It's, it's truly a very nice piece of technology. There, there is no uh, argument here. It's, it comes with very nice features. However, the fact that it strongly recommends using ECC memory is kind of worries me. Um, also, regarding the red support on uh, OpenPSD, it's generally in uh, good shape, uh, except for the red file discipline, which we still cannot remove from. So, yeah, that's a bit embarrassing, I would agree. Yeah, about encryption, we have multiple choices on FreeBSD on top of the Geom uh, layer, so we have Gilly and GBDE. Because they are on top of Geom, then in main we can put any file system we want on top of it. Uh, for Gilly, since recently, FreeBSD 11, uh, we can support full disk encryption, uh, the disk being decrypted by the bootloader using a passphrase. We also support, uh, not in base, but develop for FreeBSD a file system level encryption via uh, something called PE. Uh, which allows to encrypt only some directories on whatever file system there is under the hood. By the way, we do encryption on OpenBSD is uh, similar to how we manage red devices, uh, hardware or software. Uh, by using the BioControl uh, Management Interface Utility over a software uh, encrypting discipline virtual device. So it is already familiar to people uh, because it's the same utility for everything. And the process is very simple, it's just one command. So obviously we want to support a full disk encryption decrypted by the bootloader using a passphrase or a uh, key disk that's uh, ideal for non-interactive use, like uh, using a USB dongle or anything. Well, uh, by the way, on FreeBSD, uh, using encrypted swap is very, very easy. You just append .eli in your FS tab uh, at your app devices, uh, device name, and then it's automatically appending. Well, our swap has been encrypted by default uh, for many years without the need to do anything. So, it's my opinion that swap should always be encrypted. Uh, your SSH or PGP private key would actually end up there at some point. Um, we do have a system control uh, to be able to disable swap encryption if it's uh, really needed. I'm mentioning it because that is an exception to the uh, general uh, OpenBSD rule where security enhancements are enabled by default but can hardly be disabled. Um, and speaking of default settings, um, that's really something I love uh, about uh, this operating system. They make sense to me at least and are very well thought of. Uh, we regularly have lengthy uh, arguments uh, within the project about <coughs> what features should be available by default and in which way it should work by default out of the box. That's how we came up with uh, um, very simple demons. 
So the network related ones are actually a good example because they solve hard problems in simple ways. I've, I've seen a, a few people already um, uh, understand how networking works, for example, by just reading the configuration and map page of uh, BGP and similar. Well, why it's true that OpenBSD is full featured on, uh, on the network side, FreeBSD is also very full featured on that side. Uh, back to the base system, uh, all those demons make your base system uh, quite huge. Uh, some of those tools could just be installed by ports uh, instead of why having them in base. Uh, we consider OpenBSD as a general purpose operating system that provides them a useful uh, number of services out of the box. Uh, it's, it's an important design decision uh, because it means that all these tools are developed together. Uh, a change in the kernel or library will immediately trigger some modification to these demons if need be. Uh, also, anything that is part of base is audited, usually pledged, and follows our standards. The situation is totally different in ports. Um, also, it encourages code synchronization uh, within the base system. Uh, that would be a totally different thing if these were part of the port stream, because things like runtime breakage may become unnoticed for some time. Um, and for one, I'm very happy to have so many features in the base system. And the funny thing, actually, is that OpenBSD base system is still smaller than FreeBSDs. Really? Yes. So it's quite surprising to speak about a huge base. On one hand, you strip down the base system, removing stuff like text, text info and pro. But on the other hand, you have three firewalls. <laughs> Well, the base system for us is also a current out-of-box general purpose system. Uh, for us, full feature version of a given server can be installed from packages. There is no reason why it should blow the base system uh, with a tool. If I take the example of an MTA, I mean, um, if you need to run an MTA, you will need to add tons uh, to depend on tons of external libraries. Otherwise, you have you won't have a full feature one. I mean, LDAP connections, antivirus connections, uh, anti spam connections, everything. Uh, that's something you will get from the from the base from the port tree. So let's move that to the port tree. Uh, why would I bother having an H full uh, feature HTTP server installed on my own storage on my storage server? Of course, if a FreeBSD developer maintains that code, then it's another thing. Then it could be in. That's the reason why we ended up, for example, with three firewalls, which is still not a big issue in my opinion. Um, with the exception of a couple of servers, which are closely tied to the kernel interfaces, like uh, iSCSI target layer uh, or NFSD, uh, we, there is no need for us to uh, provide full feature server. And if there, if we have, we do provide knobs so that we can build a stripped down version of FreeBSD if they need. Well, I think that's actually a major difference between our operating system. Uh, we do not want to provide knobs for everything. Uh, we want to provide what we consider uh, same default and best practices to enforce our base. Uh, also, is it a job to the operating system to provide embedded or stripped down editions? An OpenBSD based installation is basically a complete 4K in itself. I mean, meaning you, you have everything you need to continue developing the operating system, utilities, compiler, and all. Uh, similarly to FreeBSD, the non BSD, ISC, uh, nice uh, license part are isolated in the source tree. So you can easily and safely make commercial products uh, out of uh, OpenBSD uh, without putting the actual responsibility of providing real nodes on us. Talking about nodes, um, doesn't make FreeBSD more like a toolkit to, bring, to build an operating system than an actual OS? No, not at all. Uh, FreeBSD by default uh, is a full feature OS, as I said. Uh, in the binary form, we only do support the plan for FreeBSD as served by the ISOs. So, uh, but keep in mind that FreeBSD is also widely used in embedded environments or inside appliances. Uh, both need lots of flexibility, either stripping down the side of, for embedded or being able to replace one feature. Uh, we do provide by their own implementation for some uh, appliances. Uh, also, we do encourage a lot vendor to work closely uh, with their herb stream, in that case, meaning us. Yes, yes. FreeBSD does encourage vendors to contribute and commit. But it, it wants to be that kind of universal operating system, like Linux, and satisfy the maximum number of people. If you look at it from a different perspective, you would also say that FreeBSD does what your employer wants, while OpenBSD does what its developer wants. Anyway. That's pretty false. Anyway. <laughs> 
I like the fact that I can have a functional problem solving box in no time and without the need to install uh, any third party packages. Um, for instance, I don't need to install a proper shell that I can work with. I'm not talking about heavily features CSH or whatever, but being CSH as a default root shells, you guys, free? If someone is willing to push a new feature and or a new knob to improve flexibility, as long as it doesn't break FreeBSD direction, usability, we will accept it. Uh, it's not a problem. Uh, it gives us uh, the flexibility we need in the base system and it's very uh, nice to make FreeBSD usable in every single kind of niche usage if needed. For example, making a very thin storage uh, server that runs on RAMDISC like we do uh, in Gandhi. Um, which makes me think that, um, which makes me think, I see that OpenBSD does not support kernel module at all. I find those very handy to, uh, for flexibility and as I can load or unload feature on demand. Or uh, if I need, if I need it without having to rebuild the kernel or uh, play with this control tunable to be able to interact with the kernel configuration, isn't that painful to tune your, to tune your kernel on OpenBSD? Well, that is true that we did remove support for loadable uh, kernel modules, uh, but we still have uh, dynamicity uh, thanks to our config utility. Uh, it's used to modify some part of the kernel without having to recompile it. Like uh, device parameters that are usually hard-coded in the kernel can be changed, added, or removed. Uh, it does not allow you to inject code uh, into the kernel, but it gives you the choice to enable or disable uh, existing code. Um, to give you a simple example, uh, uh, it's often used to disable ULPT, uh, which is the USB printer support, to make a printer using cups and lib USB uh, actually uh, usable by uh, um, OpenBSD. Okay, let's virtualize a little bit this talk. Um, on FreeBSD, we do support uh, running Linux binaries natively via the Linux simulator, also called Linux simulation. Um, right now, we do support uh, Linux i386 and AMD64 binaries. There are patches available to support Linux ARM binaries. We also do support running old FreeBSD binaries on newer releases, uh, meaning that if one wants to create a gel uh, to run uh, FreeBSD4 use on binaries, on FreeBSD11 it works out of box. Um, on the virtualization front, uh, we um, we are very well featured. Uh, we do support native virtualization via Beehive. Um, it has many nice features. We have a netmap net map interface uh, support, VNC server support. It can run almost any operating system guest as long as it supports Virtio and EFI. Uh, it is also fully it is also fully sandbox via Capsicum. We also support external virtualization mechanism. Uh, we are uh, we can run natively as DOM0 or DOMU for Xen, uh, or we also have virtual box in the post three that works on FreeBSD. Yeah, well, having Citrix people working as developers does help having yep. done zero support, that's true. Um, but I think it uh, boils down to the fact that you guys made the decision a long time ago to not fuck with the hardware as much as possible, but instead let the manufacturer do it, and instead concentrate uh, on something else. Um, on OpenBSD, the situation is a bit different. We prefer to try and convince the vendors to open the specification to let us write our own drivers. Um, your approach is probably more pragmatic, that's for sure, uh, but as you probably know by now, we like to be in control uh, of the operating system. So sure, not everything is black and white, uh, of course, and uh, so this is to be taken with a grain of salt since there is a lot of cross-pollination uh, between all of our projects. And uh, we do use some parts of your vendor uh, written drivers like uh, IX, for example. Well, being open to vendors, in my opinion, is a pragmatic point of view and does not make us lose control of our source at all. Um, actually, we have very good relationship with plenty of them. Uh, they are committers uh, running through our usual process to recruit new developers. Um, we review the code they submit. Uh, we even extend it some time. Uh, it's not unusual to see some vendor committers continuing to uh, contribute to FreeBSD uh, way after the life of the said vendor. So back in virtualization, because that's what we're speaking about, uh, what is the situation on OpenBSD? Uh, well, let's start with uh, VMM, since it's been mentioned a couple of times already. Uh, currently, it can reliably run uh, OpenBSD, uh, 
uh, NetBSD, uh, some Linux distribution. Uh, I assume maybe FreeBSD by now, I haven't tried. Uh, it provides a very uh, nice user interface with uh, VM control. Uh, and since it's rooted and pledged, uh, breaking out of VM monitor means ending up in the shroot with obviously very limited uh, list of allowed system calls. Uh, the other virtualization technology that OpenBSD supports is uh, Sun4V logical domains, uh, also known as uh, LDOM. Uh, it's hardware uh, virtualization. Uh, that means the resources are partitioned directly at the hardware level. Uh, it's supported on a Spark V9 processor. Uh, it's it's a pretty secure design, uh, since there is no software hypervisor involved. Uh, the processor itself uh, run uh, in hyper-privileged uh, privilege execution mode. So it can natively run any Spark operating system, uh, Linux included. Right. Um, so we were speaking since the beginning about our project internals, uh, but what about relationship with the external uh, projects? In general, for FreeBSD, uh, most upstream are happy to receive FreeBSD related patches and integrate them, even big ones. Uh, for example, dealing and upstreaming patches to LibreOffice was a very easy process. Uh, they welcomed all of them, and they were even they even tried to set up a CI so that they are not breaking our usage. Uh, on the GNOME front, so you probably know better as a GNOME committer yourself. Um, we don't. Uh, well, I don't deal with the, the patches myself directly. Uh, we have a good relationship with our Glib, JLib uh, maintainers, who um, came to us to ensure that JLib is working uh, for, uh, correctly on FreeBSD, on the BSD in general, by the way. And uh, they even set up uh, the GNOME CI on FreeBSD to ensure that every builds are um, everything builds as fine as possible. Yeah, I guess we, we pretty much share the, uh, the same experience here. Um, while some streams are more open than other uh, to non-Linux uh, contributions, in general they're pretty happy uh, to integrate our patches, and sometimes they actually learn a thing or two about portability. Um, it is true that a few identified people within the free software community take some pleasure in bashing anything that is not GNU or Linux, uh, but these are far from being the norm, so fortunately for the app, system. Uh, sometimes upstream can also be very close. Uh, we have uh, OpenBSD developer uh, who are also developer at GNOME, uh, XFCE, Mozilla, LibreOffice, etc. It's true uh, with OpenBSD being the upstream for uh, several software, uh, which I mentioned already, OpenSSH, uh, etc. Um, also, some application can be very complex to port, so it's important to be able to interact nicely uh, with upstream because sometimes you do need their help. And when things start crashing, well, that's uh, when our debugging tools come into action. So I will not go into the details uh, of such uh, tools, which uh, are probably similar to yours. Um, I just mentioned that we're building the entire database system um, with debug symbols, and that we're thinking about doing the same for ports, or at least a few uh, identified uh, ports. We already do that with uh, GLib and GTK. Yeah, so uh, FreeBSD is pretty well stuff for debugging. Uh, by default, the base system, uh, we have a cat trace, uh, trust to be able to track what an application is doing. Um, in particular, when debugging a Capsicumized application, it's very useful to have cat trace to tell you what are the capability an application might be missing, if any. Uh, more importantly, uh, we now have uh, D-Trace support in the base system, which uh, is a very powerful tool to be able to uh, do some tracing. Uh, when building the FreeBSD kernel, for example, uh, we build it with all the debug flags, which are converted to the CTF format, and are uh, in, in, and then they are all detraceable by default. Um, to help debugging, we also have uh, by default um, the, the debug flags activated when building, and but we split it from the binaries, uh, so that in embedded environments you don't end up with them. LDB and GDB has been configured so that they know where to figure out uh, was the path to those um, debug flags. Concerning the port three, uh, now lots of the application are detrace aware. Uh, but the post three itself is still not built with a debug flag yet. Uh, we are work it's work in progress. The goal is to also extract the debug flags after building so that we can provide debug package so you have uh, debug flags whenever you need it, but not when you don't need it. Right. Okay. Well, uh, debugging is uh, another area that has seen a lot of improvement uh, and development lately on OpenBSD. Uh, 
Uh, our GDB, the uh, kernel debugger, just got basic support for CTF. Uh, that has nothing to do with capture the flag. Um, once being included in two libraries, CTF, uh, or compact compressed type format, uh, will provide a subset uh, of the information from WARF, uh, debugging sections, like definitions of data type and functions used by debugging tools. Uh, we also have a CTF dump and CTF conf implementation. Thank you, MPI. Uh, and we can dynamically activate the kernel profiling using DTrace like uh, probes. So we have the bedrock for DTrace on Google BSD. Which is great. And by the way, I, I really plan to import those BSD license version of CTF dump and CTF conf. Uh, so it looks like I, you are slowly getting uh, there for deeper, for our tracing. So both projects now are going to have both uh, deb uh, nice debugging capabilities. That's it. Um, another difference between OpenBSD and FreeBSD is uh, regarding authentication and authorization. So on FreeBSD for uh, the authentication, we do use spam. Uh, actually, the OpenPAM implementation uh, developed and maintained by a FreeBSD developer, uh, which is compatible with the spam specification. It gives us access to a lot of various external modules, uh, even for uh, most of them, we do prefer rely on our own implementation. Uh, the nice thing uh, in that it makes it simple to port common software that already supports PAM. Well, uh, BSD uh, is what we use on OpenBSD. Um, it originally came from uh, BSDI's BSDOS. Um, one of the main difference between BSD OT and PAM is that PAM modules are basically libraries which must be loaded into the application. Uh, BSD OT modules uh, are actually separate applications or uh, helpers located under the user libxec OT directory and that are run as separate uh, process from the one authenticated, uh, which allowing them to communicate over a very simple IPC interface. That means we basically never expose the credential store to a possibly buggy software. So it matches the traditional privilege separation model that we use on OpenBSD, while still being able to provide different ways to authenticate to have that kernel, UV key, radius, uh, you name it. So I quite a pattern, maybe a bit more flexible and way more commonly found. Uh, so there are a lot of different uh, authentication modules uh, readily available. Uh, it usually requires uh, elevated privileges to authenticate. Uh, Applications using BSD off only need to be the off group uh, to be able to run the uh, the helpers. Um, look into our to our OpenSSH for example. Uh, most of the recent visory had uh, I mean not most but a lot of them are, are PAM related. Well, in the case of OpenSSH security advisory, maybe it's also related to the fact that the upstream, meaning you, is paying less attention for obvious reasons you just studied uh, about the PAM code itself. Uh, but I, it's true that uh, the PAM API uh, is uh, not simple to use and is also uh, very error prone. Uh, but in the Open PAM implementation, uh, while it's compatible with the official uh, API, it also provides plenty of extensions to help us that simplifies adding support for PAM in application in a less error prone manner. Anyway, um, for name services, we do use NSS, which provides us a lot of flexibility as well uh, through its modular nature. Um, not that our NSS API are, is not 100% uh, compatible with the GNU libc one, uh, but we also provide an NSCD daemon uh, which can cache name services uh, responses for users, but it is not limited to that. It can also perform the request, uh, which means the modules are no longer loaded into the libc, but in a dedicated daemon. Okay, well, regarding authorization and virtual uh, system users, uh, we only have support for traditional YB NIST. Oh. Yes. Um, OpenBSD does not use NSS, so no nsswitch.com. For basically the same reason, it does not use PAM. We do not want dynamically loaded modules to play game in our LibC or Resolver. Uh, we, we do have support from getting users out of nailed app servers, thanks to our YPLDAP uh, utility. Um, actually, I, I see that uh, you guys imported it uh, to some time ago, and I'm interested why. I mean, you, you guys have NSS and that. Isn't that good enough, or is it to satisfy flexibility? Uh, to be honest, uh, I still wonder why we have imported this YP tool, uh, YPL Lab tool, but I mean, it doesn't hurt. And as far as I know, I got feedback from at least one university that was happy to see to see it happen so that they could um, have a simpler steps to migrate from um, NIST to uh, LLAP. So. 
why not? Okay. Well, uh, so I guess that all things considered, it's pretty obvious that my BSD sucks less than yours. Yes. I. Uh, <laughs> I have to disagree on that one, and for me, it's clear that my BSD sucks less than yours. <laughs> That said, I think there are areas where we both suck equally. I mean, uh, what is the state of your wireless drivers? That is very true. We both suck in some aspects. Yeah. Well, that said, this presentation was done on a free BSD laptop. <laughs> you mean you're proud of not using a Mac? Or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As much as uh, we like to make fun of each other, uh, we are not only sharing bad things. No, no, no. In fact, I, I think that cross-pollination between our two operating systems works quite well. Uh, we actually do exchange a lot of things, and uh, it would not make sense to list everything here. But. Well, um, for my, in my opinion, uh, OpenBSD has an important role in the open source eco uh, ecosystem. Uh, you guys are talking very important project, which uh, would probably have never happened otherwise. Uh, the most famous one being obviously OpenSSH. But uh, I really like how open you are to portability for the software, given the extra amount of work it gives you. Uh, if I think of OpenSMTPD, Tmax, Mandoc, SNDIO, and many others, uh, they are very good example of that. You are also teaching upstreams about good and secure coding practices, which is a very important thing to do. And from where I stand, I think the, uh, the, the, that FreeBSD is important in the global ecosystem. Uh, it's a real enterprise uh, operating system, and that's it. I think it's uh, slowly filling up the spot left by uh, Solaris. Uh, it bundled some amazing pieces of technology, that's for sure, and in some area, it's still on the edge of innovation. Uh, some very large entities uh, obviously use it, and thank you uh, for to FreeBSD. A lot of people have been made aware of the uh, BSD community in general. So, for me, it's a very good weapon to make people aware that fringe operating systems are certainly not lagging behind Linux. For me, FreeBSD is a wonderful operating system. It's very flexible and attractive uh, in almost uh, all use cases. Uh, the project is very open, and every uh, and everyone from vendors to uh, individual can have their place in the project. Um, while there are a lot of vendors involved uh, and that contribute to FreeBSD, uh, the project remains completely community-driven, and individual can e easily find their place in the project. I'm a good example of that. In my first two years, I've been able to drive into the project and change made some very important modification, uh, including taking the, uh, being part of the direction of the project itself. Yeah, um, OpenBSD is, is a small project, but I'm very proud when I see that in some area, a small amount of hackers can compete with a huge project like, uh, like FreeBSD, and sometimes actually do deliver things ahead. Uh, I'd like to say that we do serious things without taking ourselves too seriously. Uh, you guys say our performance sucks, we say that your security sucks. I suppose there is some truth in both uh, stereotypes. Um, I see OpenBSD as a kind of an incubator uh, and bedrock for new technologies uh, that is not afraid to break things, a sort of a destroy to build approach. Um, I really encourage people to try and use it as a power user or, or a developer. Uh, not just install it, but really try using it. I've been surprised at how many people actually have a misconception uh, of OpenBSD, even within the BSD community itself. Um, in my experience, besides the obvious benefits OpenBSD is known for, proactive security and all, uh, it has been one of the easiest and best documented uh, operating system that I've ever used, and I see its simplicity uh, as an art form. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, all, and I think it's time for a monetary hug. BSD hug. I love you anyway, but he is... Thank you.